set a standard within the community. We are looked upon as leaders or mentors within the community for the, the kids especially. We're very much community involved people and uh, I think that's how people look as being involved, helping uh, and well respected. It's your family here. Uh, no one really singles you out um, because of a gender difference um, and I, I feel very comfortable here. You're there for each other when it really matters the most. It's sometimes can be a life or death situation and, and that really builds great relationships. This fire service, I can't instill upon enough, is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Stop on down the fire department. What do you have to lose? It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you again Damn all the planes we flew, good things we've been through That I'll be standing right here talking to you About another path I know we love to hit the road and laugh But something told me that it wouldn't last Had to switch up, look at things different See the bigger picture Those were the days, hard work forever pays Now I see you in a better place See you in a better place Ah. Uh. Can we not talk about family when family's all that we got? Everything I would do, you were standing there by my side. And now you gon' be with me for the last it's ride. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. I see you again. We've come a long way, yeah, we came a long way. from where we began. You know we started. Oh, I'll tell you all about it. When I see you again First you both go out your way And the vibe is feeling strong It was small, turned to a friendship A friendship turned to a bond And that bond will never be broken The love will never get lost Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that I present the members of the Oregon High School Class of 2015. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you. August 15th, 
15th at 2 and 8 p.m. and all of this will be at the Oregon School District Performing Arts Center at the high school. So how many dogs have you given away? Countless. We have 500? No Close, maybe. 6,000. A lot. <laughs> seem to be enjoying them though, so. Yeah, this is a homemade. Oh yeah. Officer Newbert, I'm out at National Night Out in Oregon. As you can see, we have a ton of businesses and organizations out here. What we are doing is we are teaming up with the fire department, with businesses, with organizations to come together as a community to show that we are fighting crime and that we're not going to allow crime in our community. So if you can, stop on out. We'd love to see you. <laughs> that tastes good, doesn't it? What is that? Do they need salt in their diet? Don't they? they have those salt black yeah. salt? Hi there, I'm Officer Healthy with the Belleville Police Department. This is my police horse, Monty. And we go around, we do special events in Belleville and other communities so that people can see a police horse up close. And Monty really loves his job. Smarties! And if you want, this is our, like, our makeshift photo booth where you can pretend you're a superhero too. Hey! I got the nice sun flare here. Look at this. It's okay if, if you yeah, race board yeah. first. All right, ready. <laughs> Over your hand. You want to play with your hand? hand? Yeah. Where did you hold on? What are you doing? Wait, let's watch this. All right, ready? You're in practice. You're in practice. All right, practice. Just touch, 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 touch the, just touch the board. One more time, just touch. And super really, really hard. Ready, go. Oh! Hi, I'm Mary Kay with the Oregon Brooklyn Optimist Club. We support youth in the Oregon and Brooklyn communities. We do a variety of service projects and fundraisers. And with the funds that we raise, we have special programs for youth. We have the Rising Star program in the elementary school, the Shining Star in the middle school, and the Star of the Month program in the high school. And we provide scholarships for youth, and we support them with dances and other special events that um, you know connect them with the community and the recognition programs are for students that demonstrate an optimistic outlook and help their peers um, and people that are outside their usual circle and they do service projects in the community and we honor those kind of youth that are interested in things bigger than themselves and you know just being the great future leaders of tomorrow. Hi, I'm Ann Stone from the Senior Center. Um, we'd love to have you come see us there. We have so many activities and, and things going on. We have exercise programs, fitness at the Senior Center. We have musical programs. We have educational programs. We have an adult day program for people who need to uh, come out. We have lunch every day, Monday through Friday. Um, and it's a wonderful place with a lot of fun people there. We have a wonderful time. Is there a cost to have lunch here? 
Uh, there is a donation for anybody over age 60. Um, so, yep, you can come have lunch if you can't afford to pay for it. I have it for free. Yeah. yeah. You're from Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. What's your name? Momoko. Momoko. So, what are you doing here in Oregon, all the way from Zimbabwe? Um, so, I'm a Rotary Exchange student. So, the way it works is we're assigned countries, like where you want, um, depending on what's available and where you want to go. So, I was assigned the USA and then assigned to Wisconsin. So, Wisconsin, Oregon. I came to Wisconsin, Oregon. Been here for like eight months, seven months. Yeah, I came here in January and I'll be leaving December or January. So I'm a bit different in the sense that I'm a winter to winter exchange. Usually it comes summer to summer. Like, so you follow the American school year, but since my country doesn't follow America's school system, I'm coming according to my country school system. So that's January to December. Yeah, so. So what, is this your first time to America? Oh yeah. Well, what did you find most surprising about it when you got here? The most surprising thing? My gosh, where do we start? <laughs> Just one thing, maybe maybe ten things. No. Um, one thing that really surprised you or took well, your breath away maybe. I th um, in America, people are a lot less formal than in Zimbabwe. Like, there's not, you don't have, in Zimbabwe you have to be careful when you address people. Like. There's, there are words that you use for people who are older than you, words that you use for people who are younger than you. Here, everyone's pretty neutral. Like, they use first names and everything. So would I be considered an elder? Um, well, yes, you're older than me, so... I'm older than you. Anyone older than your age? Yes, okay. everyone everyone older than me is automatically my elder. What, how would you address me, then, if we were in Zimbabwe? Um, well, first, I would never call... I would never be allowed to call you by your first name. I would have to go like um, Mr. or or like or according to your title like Doctor. Um, I would have to like if, if you I didn't know me. How would you address me if you wanted to speak to me and you didn't know me? Um, same thing. I would first have to ask you. You like you would introduce yourself, but you'd introduce yourself not as like Ted or something. You'd like say your surname like Mr. Sam. Experiences and different people I've met across the year. Um, like this is from a girl in Mexico, this is from another girl in Mexico, this was from when I went to Central Park Zoo, um, this is from a girl in Brazil, this is from Milwaukee when I went to a comic con there, this is from Thailand, the UN building, I got to go there, so like, that's in the UN, like the Library of Congress. You're collecting some serious buttons here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Very good. Ooh, you get a lanyard. There you go. If you're interested in trying hockey, you can grab a slip. We are the Orchards Research Team, and we are doing a research study with the Oregon School District now through 2016. And we're looking at respiratory diseases um, common among school-aged children, so anything from a common cold uh, to influenza. So kind of how it works, if your kid gets sick any time throughout the year, you're welcome to give us a call at our hotline. And one of us will come on out and we will swab your kid. And we'll get back to you usually in about two hours with the results of the test, the influenza test. Um, and then the kid gets a $20 gift card for their participation and donating their snot for science. Now she gets you when it gets sick. Right. <laughs> but we don't want any kids sick. We don't want any kids sick, but it's inevitable, especially when you have so many kiddos hanging out together in school systems, um, have it be a classroom or a sporting event. So. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on always. Always wash your hands, kids. Always yes. wash those hands. Don't put them in your eyes or no, no, your nose. No, your nose. <laughs> Stop that behavior. Can't you do something about this? <laughs> okay, we try our best. Lady Sanks, this was a great time. Thank you.
Um, my name is Mary Goose, and I've been living with metastatic breast cancer since 2014. My initial diagnosis was 2012, and after nine months of treatment, I thought I was done with cancer. Little did I realize that nearly one third of initial breast cancer diagnosis recurs to a terminal stage four. There is no cure for me and the 175,000 of us living with this disease. And that's why I'm here today, to demonstrate to lawmakers and the public that we meet, need more research funds. Thank you for hearing our voice and for supporting us. So, Chief, where, where are you from? I'm from a little city called Oconto, Wisconsin, just a little bit north of Green Bay, a little south of Marinette, okay. kind of right in between there, about 30 miles approximately. So how long have you been a fireman? I've been doing this for 20 plus years, 21 now, and fire chief for this will be my sixth year. Sixth year. And how did you, how did you come to come down to Oregon to take this job? Well, I, I was born and raised in Oconto, and I guess I never really thought there was anything other than Oconto. <laughs> I've kind of prepared myself as I went through my life to, you know, to have a possibility like this. And um, without knowing I'd ever do it, I just wanted to make sure I was prepared. And uh, an opportunity came up one day. I just happened to be looking, and uh, it was the right fit. You know, I, I still, when it was all happening, we still didn't believe it. And I guess they say things will happen if they're meant to be, and it was one and of those did. deals. Yeah, just real nice community. Our community was about 4,500, um, and but it was a lot like this community, an older, but yet there's a newer part too. Um, we had a river running through it and with all the lakes around here and the school systems and everything. It was just a, a really good fit for, we felt, my wife and I, for our family. Good. And your family's down here now and you're settled in? And Yeah, I started June 1st. They came down in the beginning, a uh, little towards the end of August. And then so they were prepared to go to school September 1st. And they've been here since then and they've transitioned well so far. They really like everything they have to offer here. It's been a real good So trip. over two decades of being a, a firefighter, Yep. What, are, what are some uh, uh, things that have changed in terms of uh, even technology in fire, fighting fires? Now, I will say about two, three years ago, I went in with the team into a burning house. It was uh, simulated, mm -hmm. but it was real to me. When mm -hmm. I went in there, they lit a corner of the room, and it, it, was, it was dangerous. Yeah. I went in there, they suited me up. They, actually, the front of my camera melted. I Chief, thanks for being with us today. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thanks Take for asking time. me. Oh, I love having you. Uh, tell us uh, how you, where you came from. Yeah, I'm um, originally from Iowa, northwest corner of Iowa, Storm Lake, a town of about t about this size, about 10,000. Um, grew up there, went to college in Sioux City, Iowa, went to Morningside College. Um, I played baseball there, it was Division II at the time. Division II, okay. Um, you know, I, I graduated with a criminal justice degree. I decided uh, about midway through my, my college years that I wanted to get into law enforcement. It really intrigued me. Um, so after college, I applied to a lot of larger agencies. Um, I applied in the Denver, Colorado area. I applied in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I applied in Madison. Um, and I decided at that point that whichever agency gave me the job first, the offer, I was going to go there, and it happened to be Madison. So I, I started my career with Dane County, with the sheriff's office there. Packed up my Chevy Beretta and moved, moved to Madison. Why a big city? Uh, I wanted the variety. I really wanted to get into some special things, special teams, that type of thing. So I wanted to have that opportunity as I, I continued my law enforcement career. So I thought a big agency was kind of the way I wanted Great to go. To do yep. And working uh, in Dane County, how was that? Working I mean, in Dane... Your first year, do you recall that? Uh, you know, I recall no. that. Um, coming from small town Iowa to Madison, Wisconsin was a bit of a culture shock for me. Um, you know, I started my career um, with Dane County in the jail as, as a deputy there. 
um, worked about three and a half years there. Right in the jail. In the jail. Okay. Um, I was there when they, the public safety building first started. Okay. So I started in 94. Um, and just shortly after that, they had built that facility. And I was one of the first deputies that actually was assigned to the pod system that was going to be um, in the in the cell, so to speak, with all the inmates. So that was a big change for everyone involved. Th and that's one big cell. One, it, one big cell. Open. Yep, it's an open, like, uh, um, sleeping, dining area with tables and stuff like that in there. So we nobody at that point, in the, at least in this area, um, had deputies in the cell with the inmates. Yeah. Chief, what's the greatest part of being a chief now? You know, I think the greatest part for me thus far, obviously I've only been doing it for about 45 days, um, but it's my vision that, I, that I'd like to see the police department go forward in. Um, being able to help the young officers achieve their goals, and not just young, I should say, all the officers achieve their goals, um, get them to be proud of what they're doing. Um, we've had a few challenges at the Oregon Police Department in the past couple years. Uh, one of my goals is to basically restore a sense of pride here. And that's, that, that's being able to, to be a part of that is very exciting for me and to be able to make sure that we're doing things the right way. Um, it's going to be a long process, but I'm excited about that. Well, thanks for doing yeah, that, Chief. Yeah, thank you. I'm sure the community is going to appreciate it a sure. great deal. Muchas gracias para mirar uh, el canal de WOW. Hi, I'm Kelly, the Youth Services Librarian at the Oregon Public Library. And this weekend we have the Lego Creations Expo. And that's for um, children, um, kindergarten through um, teen, 17, created a, um, something at home out of Legos or Lego or brick-like materials and brought it to the library um, and we judged. We had three judges, Judy Knudsen of the Oregon Chamber of Commerce, um, Susan Santner, the director of the Oregon Public Library, and Arlen Kai, a retired architect. And he actually designed um, the Oregon Public Library. Um, and they judged um, on based on five categories, grades K through one, grades two through um, third grade, second and third grade, grades four through six, um, and then there was a teen family, and then um, a category teen. And so, and each um, top honor was a medal with a little Lego brick keychain. And we've had, we have about, I think, 38 entries. And it's really cool to see the variety. We have a battleship to a playground, to a, like a hippie flower garden, to some robots. We have a battle bots. Um, and then we have a Ghostbusters, the Ghostbusters fire station. Um, and so that's all at the Oregon Public Library to end the summer reading program.
So, for our kindergarten through second grade winner, we have Camden, who describes their Lego creation as part computer lab, part house, and part horse ranch. That's very nice. It's, How about, it's uh, diverse. Very diverse. How about Mr. Uh, this is one of the other highlights from Maya. It is a Lego sucker upper. Um, according to her, it sucks up Legos when it wants to. Like a magnet? Yeah. Let's, let's well, move over we're moving to the here. second to third grade winners. For the second to third grade, we have Alec, who created a pirate tree house complete with monkey on top of the tree, and a pirate climbing it. It's fantastic. What's the big place here, the big hotel? It's the dream home. It's, it's a colorful, happy, relaxing house it looks where like the puppy watches over everything. Very nice. Yes. What are there some interesting things, Willie? Did re what really like catches your eye and says, wait a minute, Something different has happened here. Something with really with the logo with, with the Legos the, with the <laughs> with the logos. the logos. You better tell Kelly you said logo. I will. Instead of Lego, but they're Legos. Where, where are they? I think well, what, what catches have, your eye. This see, I like to see height. Okay. I, I particularly like this one that is hovering. And the sound that this makes. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's more like a <laughs> instead of a. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. There we that's, go. That's what it sounds like when it's crashing. Yeah. Anyway, so that I, you like the why do you like height? What is it about height that you like? Because I think that's a, I, I think that's a new difficulty level. Okay. I, I think it introduces some new elements. Yes, it does. What else catches your eye here in the magnificent hall of Legos? I like cultural references such as BattleBots, a very popular TV show, where they've recreated the set. And the people are right here sitting. Yeah, behind the um, behind the protective glass. That that must have been difficult to do, right? That's all glazed in there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Now, do you know what this ambulance here that is, is reference to? Stars. It is. Yes. This is very intricate. Yes. How do you think they did that? that, that I I think they probably bought parts of it, but it? this is I this do not is, know. That's that that's the Ghostbuster house. That's what we all strive for. Okay. All right. We have floating ship. Does it move? If you, if you, if you move it, it moves. Watch out for the shark. There is a shark in there. Yes. Are you going to stay and see the... He <laughs> we have... A now, who is it? Who, who do I have there? The creator? Pirates. This is the Pirates? Uh -huh. The Pirates of Oregon? Uh-huh. Now, where are you from? Oregon. Oregon? You are? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And your, your name is? Magnus. Magnus. A magnificent name. One of the great builders of all times. <laughs> Magnus. So, how did you get the idea to build this? Because this is really fantastic. How did you do it? I really want the truth. This I time. just built it. You built You just built it. You, you had an idea and you went with it. Uh -huh. You did a great job. Did, has anyone told you that? I know. I did do a great job. He did do a great job. You're one of the best builders around. Do you think when you get a little older that you'll start building things? That, yes. What's the what's your most favorite thing to build in the whole wide world of all times? The greatest Legos. Legos. Have you ever built a Lego hamburger? Yes, maybe. What did it taste like? Cheese. I love it. Magnus, thanks for being with us. There's cheese in there. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Wave goodbye to the kids out there in TV land. We're saying good night. opening day at the new Oregon Welcome Center and we're excited uh, almost two years we, we began this project 195 organizations individuals contractors helped us get this project completed it's taken 34 years but we've done it today and we're so we're excited uh, to welcome the new Oregon Welcome Center and just a tremendous amount of community support 
uh, and we're very pleased with how everything turned out and it's going to be exciting for the village of Oregon. I think the greatest challenge was to sort of make people aware that the uh, pump house actually existed and that it could actually be something other than just a pump house and that it could be the new Oregon Welcome Center. And I think once people sort of saw the beginning of the improvements, people were very excited and more willing to sort of participate and volunteer and give funds. And it was, it's been overwhelming uh, in terms of the generosity of the residents of Oregon. So we're very, very, very pleased with the results. Hi, I'm Scott Meyer. Um, Randy Gleisch called me probably about a year and a half ago, asked if I'd be interested in helping with the project. And oddly enough, I grew up just a uh, hundred feet or so from here and played on this uh, building and on the tower as a kid. So I was <laughs> curious to go come down and help out with the project. My name's Fred Richards. I am a currently a life scout uh, in Troop 168 in Oregon. And I really got involved with this project through, well, my uh, scout master, he said, I think we might have this project that might, you might be interested in over at the pump house. And um, he gave me the name of Randy, and I talked to him, and it kind of just all kept on going from there. Uh, we went before the board to propose this, this project, and what I ended up doing was I kind of prepped the inside of the building, and we put in our, um, our Welcome Center sign and did the landscaping around that. And I think total, with all the helpers that I had, it was somewhere around 50 man hours. And it's great, because now driving past here, I've always seen the building, I've never really known much about it. And now I know all the history about it, and it's gonna be great to share that with my family and my friends and everyone who helped work on this. And I think it's just been a great learning experience for me, learning organization and helping, uh, having other people help me out was a, was a great experience. And there's nothing that preserves a building better than a use. And so now we have a restored pump house, we have a use, and now we gotta be looking at more uses than just the Welcome Center, but this is gonna be a great little place for, for meetings, for uh, little gatherings uh, on the square. So, uh, we're seeing a lot of interest outside, and uh, we look forward to a great future for this little building. It, it, it means a great deal. If, if you count this as a little piece of our history, a little piece of our culture, I believe it was Aristotle who said that in good times, culture and history is a luxury. But in hard times, this is our bedrock. This is what our anchor is in the community. So yes, it's a little bit of history, it's another little piece of an anchor that makes our community unique and our community, well, just makes our community. Uh, this building, uh, and that you see a dedication plaque outside uh, to Joan Gefke. Thanks to Joan Gefke for being the per who spearheaded getting this on the national register, the state register, and the local landmark. And then we have our reincarnation of Joan in Randy Gleich, who came to, sorry, uh, reincarnation, energy. So thank you, Joan. Thank you, Randy. And thank you to the community for stepping forward to contribute to this. Thanks for watching. Have a great night and keep tuning in to WOW TV.